How you doing? <coughs> Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to start off by saying I appreciate so much the support that I'm seeing on this channel, the subscribers, the comments, the feedback. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. I'm just blown away by what I'm seeing. The channel growth is phenomenal. So, Welcome back. Let's talk about the point of this video. So the plans for this will be made available for free on my website. I just need a day or two to finalize them up, to finish up some little measurements, description, stuff like that. Once I finish, I will make a community post with a link to my website where the plan will be. If you want to be notified, you should make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon, and as soon as I post them, you will know. I will also update the description that will have a link to the plans once I have it finished. Anyway, Let's start talking about this build. So this is an easy, easy project that's selling very well in my area. One thing I'm making sure to focus on doing is test the market before I make a video on these and tell you that they sell. I make sure that they sell by posting them and selling them myself. So I have about $35 expense total in each planner. Five two by sixes from the big box store, which are $4.32 currently in my area. A little bit of finish, a little bit of screws, and that's it. A couple hours of work, that's really all there is to it. I'm selling these for $200 for one or $300 $350 for a pair of two. A pair is two. I don't know why I elaborated that, but it is considered elaborated. You're welcome. So, pretty good profit margins, eh? Pretty good profit. Even if you're paying yourself for your time, you consider your time valuable. These can be done in about an hour and a half to two hours per theater. Make a profit, you're still paying yourself, you're still covering your expenses. It's a good project. Very easy to sell within two hours of posting. We had two of them sold. Now I made them and now we're getting rid of them. That being said, let's get started running through the cut list. And so, <clears throat> so anytime you're dealing with dimensioned lumber, you want to make sure you take off the round over. And that's what I did. I took off the round over off of every two by six, and then you use that flat edge for the reference. Right now, we're just running through the cut list. I'm cutting out these one and a half inch strips. Those will be used for the legs and the aprons. And right here, I'm ripping down or resawing the wood for the panels. So we'll actually make shiplap out of this. I prefer to do all of my cross cuts on the table saw. I'll do as many as I can because it's just more accurate in my opinion. I can set the fence. Once it's set, all the pieces come out identical. So here we're cutting down the shiplap or cross cutting these to length. Here shortly we're going to start cutting the grooves for the shiplap. It's a, not a complicated process. Very easy to do and I did it with just a single saw blade. In case you don't have a dado stack, you can do this without a dado stack. And so I'm barely taking off an nth of a degree, really just taking off the writing that's on these pieces of board. You know how they stamp it, the dimensional lumber. So I'm, I'm taking that off on the planer. So don't do a lot of sanding on this project. So here I'm lowering the saw blade to start doing the ship lap. And it takes a couple of passes. So this should be lowered to about half the thickness of your ship lap piece. And you're going to go in an eighth of an inch wide shiplap so an eighth of an inch wide by half the thickness deep now i accidentally went a little bit too wide on this one i actually went a quarter inch i wasn't paying attention so i had to accommodate the aprons i had to cut those down a little more off camera to make this planter box work but it just takes a couple passes you you slowly go towards that outside angle and then once you get to the end, you can do like a cope cut. You'll see here where I'll shimmy it back and forth to take out that little bit that's left. And that'll also smooth out all of the grooves that are left by using the Diablo blade. It cuts in a like a V groove. So you make that nice, smooth, and flat. It takes a little bit of time. It's easier with a dado stack, but it can be done without a dado stack. That being said, say hello to my dado stack. So I've had a dado stack for a few years now, and it is a very handy tool to have if you can afford to put one in your shop. Right now I'm using a dado stack to cut out the groove for my aprons that's going to house the shiplap. So this groove is about 7 16 inches wide by a half inch deep. And you should, 
I didn't do it here, but you should try to get those to be the same width. The outside edges, those should be the same width. But again, I wasn't paying much attention to the, what I was actually doing. I was paying more attention to the camera. I'll do better next time, but it still doesn't mess up the project. Okay, so with almost everything cut out, we're going to start with the assembly. And I'm going to kind of run through the assembly pretty quickly. The instructions should be pretty detailed on how to do it. It's very simple. Once you get the first step and second step, you just repeat the process. So we're going to take our aprons and our legs. I'm going to connect the first apron with the dado facing down. I miscut this, so I miss. I actually messed up the layout on the dado, which is fine. If you do this, you want the thicker side stick into the inside of the planter box. So I want to put this thinner side, which is about a half inch thick uh, lip. And we'll put that to the outside of the planter box. I'm going to put the thicker side to the inside. And that's so that it will support the actual planter box bottom. So all we're doing is taking the Craig jig, connecting it to the top side of the leg. You want to make sure this is flush. And screw it down. Then I'm going to take four pieces of my ship lap, and this will give me the layout for where the bottom is. It doesn't have to be too complicated. Just simple, simple, simple. Make sure you have the same thing, the outside, the thickest part facing to the inside. If you miscut it like I did, I actually made a few mistakes on this one, uh, but it's still going to work out. So now I can take my ship lap and put it in there. And the reason that I did ship lap rather than gluing a panel is because I don't want the panel to split. This wood has a lot of moisture as it is. Being exposed to the elements, it's going to expand and contract. And it's already doing a lot of that as it is, like I said. But being in the elements, it's going to do it even more and then panels will split. With the ship lap, I have some overlap that whenever they kind of expand and contract, there's still there's going to be no gap, no holes. And that's it. We're going to take our next leg and attach it like so. If you don't want to use Craig jig, you could do dowels or something like that. I have no issues with using Craig jig for something like this. And so that's the first panel. We're going to make the second panel, then we're going to connect the two. You're pretty much going to repeat the same steps, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. I'm just going to do it and speed up the recording. You want to be mindful that you don't close yourself in on a box before putting in your paneling. A way to avoid that is I'm going to take one of the panels and I'm going to do one runner on each side, place my ship lap, do the bottom runners, and then I'm going to use this other panel to cap it. <laughs> Cat-like reflexes. I'm sitting here doing woodwork and I should be doing parkour. Oh.
So that is the box. All we have left to do is the trim on the sides and we'll do a cap and a bottom and that will finish the box. But first, I want to make the cap. We're going to use whatever's left of the two by sixes to make the trim and to make the base for that because they don't have to be really consistent pieces. We could kind of just use what we have left over. So we're going to make the cap, then we're going to put the box to the side and we're going to make the obelisk to go on top. So our cap is going to be two and a quarter inch wide. Now, if you followed exactly the way that I have the plans laid out, it should work out just fine to where you cut those to inside angle to inside angle is 13 and a half inches. However, I kind of messed up on my ship lap and I went a little bit too far in. Rather than an eighth of an inch, I did a quarter of an inch. So now I have 13 and a quarter runners. That's fine. I'm just going to make my cap 13 and a quarter long from inside angle to inside angle. The outside angles will still meet up. It'll still cover what I needed to cover. It's really just for decoration and to give the obelisk something solid to sit on. All right, let's talk obelisk. So this obelisk is pretty simple to do. And there's a jig that we're gonna to do to make it even most simpler. The bottoms of the legs are cut at 10 degree angles. The tops are also cut at 10 degree or 80 degree tapers. It depends on which reference you have for the angle. I'm gonna show you a jig that's gonna make it really simple. The first thing I wanna do is put a 10 degree cut on the bottom of my remaining one and a half inch strips. Then I'm going to build a jig that will cut this taper right here for the top so they all meet up at a nice flush surface to this center post. Okay, so to do the jig for the legs, we're going to use some scrap wood. I have a long piece of plywood. You can tell I've already made the jig. I'm going to flip it over and start from scratch. So this is where I want to cut my taper on this end. I'm going to make me a mark at about a half an inch because that's what I want the top of my taper to be. Take your square, make your line. All right, now we have our straight line. Set it on that line. I'm going to pull this back to 10 degrees. I want to make my line. Now I'm going to put a backer on that 10 degree mark. Piece of pop there. All right, so I'm gonna put my backer in place. We're gonna set it on that 10 degree mark and we're gonna screw it down. And that's it. So now all I gotta do Set the fence to where it's the same width of this plywood. I'm going to put my leg on there and I'm going to run it through, get my taper and move on to the next one. Okay, so with our tapers cut, very, very simple, very easy. Even with filming and recording, it took less than 10 minutes, if even that. Our legs are gonna be 57 and a half inches tall. So I'm gonna measure from the end of that taper, the outside angle of the 10 degree angle at the bottom, will measure from, from that end to the outside angle of the 10 degree angle at the bottom is 57 and a half inches. So we're gonna take it, Pivot this back to 10 degrees and make our mark.
And so once we cut this angle, what that 10 degrees is going to do is make the leg angle to the inside to meet that center post. Now, once I make this cut, I'm going to use this leg as reference for all the other legs so that they're all the same length. So these are the pieces that will make up the ladder for the obelisk. It is very beneficial to go ahead and pre-drill all of your holes for these. Instead of trying to pre-drill while you have it in place, it saves a lot more time if you pre-drill it before you try to screw it to the obelisk legs themselves. And right here I'm just doing a half inch by half inch hole just to give the screw head a recess you can go back and put a dowel to seal these off so it's actually pretty advisable to do that so that you don't get water into those holes and it increases the rate of rot and so here you just lay it out as best as you can using what you got so I'm laying it out I'm attaching the center post to two legs and I'm going to attach each leg on the outside later on And so I found the easiest way to do this is do all of the pieces at the bottom first and then work your way up on each side. I took some one and a half by one and a half inch cutoffs that I had and I used those for spacers, which you'll see in a second. I used those for spacers to work my way up to the top. You just set your spacers on there, set your ladder rung on top, screw it in and move on to the next one. It makes the process so much simpler rather than laying it out with a tape measure and it makes it more consistent those spacers are pretty much set you're not going to mess up using a spacer so like i said earlier the trim is just made out of the scrap that's left over i'm cutting it a quarter inch wide by three quarter inches i'm sorry a quarter inch thick by three quarter inches wide laying it out in place tacking it down Simple, simple. You can make it as simple as you want. Now this tongue oil, I will have a link in the description. It is 100% pure tongue oil. There's no other chemicals mixed in with it. Tongue oil is a good exterior finish. You do want to put a couple of coats though. It takes about a day for the wood to absorb the tongue oil. Then you come in and kind of etch it with a high grit sandpaper or even a Scotch-Brite pad. Then you put your second coat. That's the base I leave it open because when somebody puts a plant in this box, it's going to be inside of one of the planter pots. So you don't need a solid base. They're not going to fill these up with dirt. Last thing, do not attach the obelisk to the box until you deliver because they need to be able to put the plant inside the box itself. So pre-drill the holes, give them some screws so that when they put the plant in, they can put the obelisk to the top themselves okay so if you've stuck around this long you probably found value in this video you should like and subscribe i'm all about providing as much value as i possibly can and making it as available as i possibly can the plans will be made available for free on my new website here within the next couple days like i said i will make a post with an update so when i make that post you should subscribe so that you're notified and you can immediately hop onto my website get the plans for free and get started there will also be an option to subscribe to a newsletter. I will be doing a newsletter kind of bi-weekly. One, it'll sit out as soon as I post plans on my website, you will automatically get a copy of the plans sent to your email. There will also be some educational type articles that I'll be sending out. I have a lot of research I've been doing lately and I'm looking to make that into an easy to digest article format. I'm gonna be sending those in an email, kind of a bi-weekly for now. 
type thing. It's completely free. There's no cost. I don't get any of your information except your email address. And like I said, you'll get the plan sent to your email. You'll get the article sent to your email. It won't be spam at all. I can't stand spam. I am not going to spam you. I'm only going to send you stuff that I think is valuable and I'm going to send it to you for free. That being said, like, subscribe. Thank you so much again for the support. I am looking forward to seeing what this channel does. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I am working on the plans for the next video as well, and I'm excited about that because I'm making a project actually for myself in the next one. So before we go, one thing, one last thing I want to point out. I made quite a few mistakes on this build. The beautiful part about this build, the beautiful thing about beginner woodworking type projects or any woodworking project, it's okay to make mistakes. Don't be too hard on yourself if you mess it up. Just make sure that you fix it. You accommodate other components to match that component. Do everything as excellent as you possibly can. That's how you're going to learn something new on every project. So, hope the video helps. Good luck, have fun in your shop, and I will catch you on the next one.